the United Methodist Church in Mount Vernon. We're so glad to worship with you today. What a wonderful gift and privilege it is. So would you join me in the call to worship? <coughs> God so loved the world that he gave his only son. There we go. So that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have <coughs> eternal life. We have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace and holiness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. And would you join me in this prayer? Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself. Being the chief cornerstone, join us together in unity of the Spirit by their teaching, that we may become a holy temple, acceptable to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Cabin Fever Fest that was supposed to be last weekend has been postponed and rescheduled for next Sunday, February 10th, so a week from tonight. Um, if you can come, we still would love to have you come, but we'd love you to sign up again um, because some people won't be able to come and some new people can come, so we'd love for that. Um, that would be wonderful. It will be 5.30 to 8 in the fellowship hall, and you can sign up on the back of your welcome sheet. Pretty easy, right there. There are prizes for games and a photo booth. Don't miss out. Well, there you go. It's a great time to gather together. Um, there is going to be a blood drive held here in our fellowship hall uh, Thursday, February 28th from 2 to 6. So um, you can contact Allison in the office and get your prime time slot. Uh, point of view discussions are going to happen February 17th, 24th, and March 3rd. Jim Beatty um, put something in the circuit rider about this, and this is around the way forward conversation. So whether you have, uh, you know, have been following these conversations and know just what's happening, or you have no idea what's happening, you have a strong opinion, you are kind of on the fence. This is a good place for you to come to learn more and have conversations around compassion um, as we grow together and learn more about what's happening um, in the the global church in the United Methodist Church. So. February 17th, 24th, and March 3rd from 6.30 to 8. Let's pray. Most holy God, we come before you with a lot of celebrations, um, and we thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity just to praise your holy name. We thank you for um, the spirituals that came from our African um, brothers and sisters, we thank you, Lord, um, for those gifts that we um, take part in. Lord, we thank you for the work that you've done through the wrestling team, and um, Lord, we ask for safe travel and, and good competition, um, good fun on Tuesday. We thank you for the great work um, of the speech contest and um, many students who have put a lot of energy forth, and teachers and coaches as well. Lord, you are good, and we thank you. Lord, we thank you for birthdays and anniversaries. We thank you for the opportunity to gather together publicly. Lord, we come before you also with um, burdens on our hearts and, and concerns and, and fears and worries. We come knowing that you are God and that you are good, um, but that we don't understand. Lord, we pray over Marty um, and his wife, and Lord, we just pray for that transition to go smoothly back home. I pray, Lord, um, for your continued healing touch and um, just all the details they need to come together. Lord, I pray over every bit of paperwork and every um, decision that needs to be made. I pray over every person that enters their home um, or helps with these decisions. We pray that you would, would pull them closer to you. Lord, we pray um, for Rosa and those um, struggling with cancer or other illness. We pray um, for your great comfort, your great peace, your great healing. Lord, we, we thank you for family and friends, and we know that there are many 
um, that are struggling with, with physical illness, emotional illness, spiritual, mental. Um, Lord, and we just come to you asking that you bring us peace and bring us hope, that you bring us joy and delight. And now, God, we come before you individually as we um, have our own people, our own concerns, our own joys that we want to bring before you. Yeah, those people? 
So they would be on the, the left, or the one of the sides. It doesn't matter which one. And then you're in the middle, and then maybe, can you think of other people that you can help love better? Help teach how to love better? Yeah? Yeah. Who are those people? Can you think of any? Maybe a friend? Maybe someone in preschool? Someone in school? Preschool? preschool? <coughs> yeah, maybe a classmate? Maybe um, a friend or a sibling? You got any siblings? You guys have siblings? You're going to have a sibling? Yeah. So we have this great opportunity because Jesus teaches us. Um, he says, let all the children come to me. And he wants us all to come to him and learn. And he wants to teach us through other people. And then we can teach others what we've learned. No matter how old or young you are, you can make a great big difference in the world. Did you know that? That's awesome. All right, will you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for the gifts that you have given us. Um, we thank you for teaching us um, more about your love. And we ask that you would help us to thank and recognize those that have taught us, those that continue to teach us. And help us to recognize those that we can make a difference in their lives too. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thanks for coming up. You can keep your little chains. Our scripture reading for today is 2 Kings chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. Now, when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way to Gilgal, from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets, who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elisha said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped 
his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. This is the word of God for the people of God and all God's people say, Amen. Amen. So I really love art, and I would love to be a great artist, but I'm not. I can paint, you know, if I get a canvas out, I'll paint, and I'll do what I can to make it look pretty, or um, I love to do pottery, but I'm really not an artist, and I will never, ever be famous for my artwork. In fact, somebody someday will throw it all away and say, what was she thinking? <laughs> but when I was in Romania, I love I loved looking at art, and I love looking at paintings, and when I was in Romania, we had the opportunity to go to an Eastern, uh, not, not Eastern, a Romanian Orthodox cathedral. And everywhere you look within is painted. It's a big, big mural, a whole bunch of different pictures. And you look up and you see Jesus, and around the four corners you see the four gospel writers, the, a depiction of them. And then across the far wall there's the twelve apostles. And everywhere you look, um, there is someone, a biblical character or a biblical story, um, or perhaps a saint, that they, um, they recognize as saints in their church. It is an absolutely magnificent sight, and I could have spent a week just standing in that place, walking around and looking at all the art. Although, creating it is not my best <coughs> art. Um, but there are some really wonderful artists in the world, and um, you may have heard of Donatello, um, one of the great, greatest artists of the 15th century who cr created this beautiful sculpture of David. You may have also heard of a man named Michelangelo, who was famous in the 16th century um, for a very similar uh, sculpture from the same war, one on either end of the war, um, or the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel. <coughs> now, if you looked really close at their art, you might realize, or it might seem to you, that, that Michelangelo learned from Donatello because of the way that their sculptures so are so similar. However, Donatello died nine years before Michelangelo was born. So there's no way that their paths ever crossed. No way. But there's a man named Bertoldi Giovanni, who was also an artist, who one day got bold enough to ask Donatello if he could study under him and learn about his work and how he does his work, if he could mentor him. And then after Donatello passed away, um, Bertoldi mentored Michelangelo. Now, Bertoldi probably wanted to be a famous artist. And to some, maybe he is. But he's, he doesn't have a teen Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle name. <laughs> you know, he's not known as well as Donatello or Michelangelo, but he played a very, very significant role in one of the greatest artists of all time in training him up. So whose life are you making a difference in? The greatest masterpiece that we can ever create, the greatest legacy we can ever leave behind, comes from the people that we invest in, the relationships that we build. So if you look at the scripture that we read today from 2 Kings, you see Elisha following Elijah. Now this gets to be a little bit of a tongue twister, so hang with me. But um, Elijah is basically Elisha's mentor. And what happens back in 1 Kings is that when Elijah chooses Elisha to be his mentee, he throws his mantle over him, his cloak, his coat. He just throws it on him um, as he's farming. And Elisha says, okay, but can I say goodbye to my family? And he sells his oxen and he, he burns up everything. He destroys everything and he cooks all the meat and he leaves it all behind to follow Elijah. Now last week we learned about Elijah and, and how he was a listener, how he heard the still small voice of God. We learned about how many miracles that he did. So many miracles. Right? He healed, um, he raised a boy from death, the widow's son. He, we read today that he parted the Jordan just by wrapping up his cloak, his mantle, and whipping it on the water. The Jordan um, opens and they walk across on dry ground. This man is pretty amazing. And so Elisha doesn't want to leave him. Three times the people tell him, 
that Elijah is going to leave and you should just stay back. And he says, uh-uh, no way. Be quiet because as long as he's alive, as long as he's walking on earth, I'm going to be with this man. I'm guessing he's thinking, I want to learn from him. I want to be in his presence because he points me closer to God. He makes me feel closer to God. So then as time passes, Elijah asks him, what is it that you want from me? And, and he says, the double portion of your spirit. Now most of us, when we um, know someone or, or really respect someone, we, we think if we could only have half of what they have in this area, we would be pretty great. That's the saying that we say, if we only had half then wouldn't that be wonderful? But Elisha is bold, and he says, no, I want a double portion of your spirit. I want twice what you have. And if we follow 2 Kings on, what you're going to see is that he, well, first of all, in the scripture, we see that he'll know if he's going to get that double portion by if he watches Elijah go up into the clouds. And he does. So we can be pretty sure that he's going to get that double portion. The beautiful thing about their relationship is early in the scripture we see Elisha calling Elijah master. But by the end, when he's going up into the clouds, he says, Father, Father. There's a relationship there, a very close, intimate relationship that has been created. He says, Father, Father. Back in that time, um, a double inheritance is what the oldest son would receive um, from the father. When it came to their inheritance, he would get the double portion of inheritance. So here he's asking of his son, can I have a double portion of your spirit? And if we look at, into 2 Kings, we'll see that Elisha doesn't just continue the ministry that Elijah has done. He doesn't just do some of the same things. It actually multiplies. He actually does recorded about twice as many miracles as Elijah. It multiplies. Isn't that awesome? If you think about your mentors, so think about your mentors for a little bit. Who is it that has poured into you? Who is it spiritually that has helped you grow closer to Christ? Who's made you want to be a little more loving, a little more compassionate, a little more gracious? Who's made you want to be in the Word a little more, pray the Lord's Prayer a time or two more, come to church and soak in God's lavish love? Who is it that's drawn you closer? And what if you pray for a double portion of what they had? Wouldn't that be cool? So when I was in high school, um, I had a youth director named Lisa Meckel. And she was awesome. You know, she was so cool. And we... Um, she did all kinds of fun things at youth group, but we also did serious things. And we had shaving cream wars, maybe just once, but I remember it really well. Um, we had a field out by our church, and so everybody brought shaving cream and garbage bags for the ride home. And um, it was a mess, and I don't recommend it. But it was really fun. We also watched The Matrix, um, and probably other movies, but I remember The Matrix that dates me a little bit. And... Um, looked at how the Trinity comes through in movies. How can we learn about God through pop culture? Um, she also took me to lunch. She cared enough about me as an individual to invest in my life and to hear what was going on in my world and to spend time in prayer for me. Beyond that, um, we had, my senior year, we had a, a senior Sunday. So it was a youth Sunday, basically, but the seniors took um, the lead in the worship service. And I had an opportunity, she chose me and asked me if I would um, give part of the sermon. So it was the first sermon that I ever preached on Senior Sunday. She played a very significant role in my life. Um, to the, you know, we got to even watch her. She got engaged while she was leading our youth group. And I mean, it was just such a precious, precious time. But who is it that's poured into you? That you look back. I mean, when I received my call, I remember reaching out to her on Facebook. We hadn't talked for years. And she said, Lisa, I've just been thinking about you, and I just want you to know. Who are those people that have poured into you in the past or continue to in the present? Do they draw you closer to Christ? And what if you prayed for a double portion of what they had? 
So I made a list this week of all my mentors, or not all of them, but the ones that I could think of first and foremost. And I then started making a list of some of the different qualities that I would like to grow in and be more like them. You know, there's some that are more bold, there are some that are more compassionate, there are some that are wonderful creatures and, and really good with people. And so if I could have a double portion of all these people's faith journey, wouldn't that make one cool person? Think about that in your life. <laughs> we have an opportunity to talk to people and grow and learn from people. And so I think about Elisha and his journey, following Elisha. And, and if you read the next two verses after where we stopped, you'll see that Elisha actually takes that cloak, that very same cloak that Elijah whipped the water with and it split, and Elisha does the exact same here. You'll see that not too long later, he raises another boy from the dead by lying on him just the way that Elijah did. The Lord gives a double portion of his spirit. So those mentors, those people that I think about, um, are people that make me want to be more like God. They, they make me feel like when I'm in their presence, um, I'm closer to Jesus. You have people like that where when you feel like you're next to them or walking with them or have a conversation with them that you're a little bit closer to Jesus. In Hebrews um, 13, 7, it says this, Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Those that have taught you, those that have shared with you, Consider what the outcome of their life was. What did that look like and what did that produce? And imitate their faith. It doesn't say imitate everything about them, but imitate their faith. So today, are you willing to imitate the faith of those um, mentors around you? Are you willing to draw just a little closer to Jesus? Because Jesus knew, Jesus knew that the best way to spread the love of Christ was to spend time with, with a few and really pour into their lives, right? He had the 12 disciples who he poured into day in and day out. And so this, this religion, this Christianity that started in one little corner of the world spread like wildfire and is still alive 2,000 years to, to afterwards, right? So 2,000 years later, here we are. What a beautiful, beautiful gift. So, perhaps we won't all be Michelangelo's. Perhaps we won't all be Donatello's. Elijah's or Elisha's. But what if, what if you are a Bertoldi and Giovanni? What if you are that link between two wonderful people? And without that link, that person won't grow. That person won't get to where they're going. Are you willing to be the link? Because it's the greatest thing you can do. Would you pray with me? Most holy and gracious God, we thank you and praise your mighty name for the gifts that you have given us. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that, that you walk with us personally. We thank you that you teach us, that you guide us, that you carry us through. Lord, we thank you for the people you put in our life, um, those who are faithful. And we ask, Lord, that you would teach us to imitate their faith. Lord, we pray that if you are laying people on hearts and minds right now, that you would give them the boldness to walk up to or call or text the person and say, hey, would you be my mentor? Lord, give us that strength. Give us that courage um, to learn to grow together and then pass it on to pour it out on another. Lord, we thank you for all that you are doing and all that you continue to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, the Lord loves you, my friends, so much that he surrounds us with people who will care for us. You've got a whole bunch of them here. If you don't feel it or don't know it, there's a bunch of them in this room. So go and receive, go today, willing to receive, ready to receive, and ready to give. That beautiful and glorious faith, grace, and love of Christ.
In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. Amen.